so one of my students is a born optimist, but she came to my office the other day in a state of despair. She said to me, I'm majoring in computer science because computers are the future. But I've started to realize that if computers are the future, I'm not. I haven't even graduated, and I already feel like I've lost my job to artificial intelligence. Well, let me tell you what I told her. You are also the future. No matter how powerful AI gets tomorrow, tomorrow will still need you. And that's because your brain is capable of being smart in ways the computers never can. Computers run on logic, and logic requires data. Lots and lots of data, which in the real world is a problem. Because in the real world, life is often low or no data. When the rules change, as they do all the time in biological environments, data gets thin and frequently breaks. So to survive, our brain had to evolve ways to act intelligently with very little or even no information. To logic, that's an oxymoron. To logic, there's no way to act smart without information, but our brain defied logic. It went beyond the logical into the biological, evolving low data mechanisms of acting smart that allowed it to adapt quickly to unprecedented situations. Those low data mechanisms of intelligence are what I study in my lab, and today I'm gonna to talk with you about two of the most extraordinary, imagination and common sense. Now I could stand up here for hours and hours and hours and talk about the neuromechanics of how imagination and common sense work in the brain and why they are impossible for computer hardware, why no AI will ever have common sense, why no AI will ever have the imagination that you had when you were four years old. But since we've only got a few minutes here together, let me instead explain how to do what school doesn't and computers can't. Let me explain how to improve your powers of imagination and common sense. So let's start with imagination. Imagination is the power to see the future and then make it real. It's what allowed human engineers to create the modern world. And of those engineers, none was more legendarily imaginative than Nikola Tesla. Tesla was born in a rural 19th century village, but he had a vision of a future city powered by wireless and electricity. He foresaw GPS, cell phones, and infinite green energy. So what was the secret to Tesla's imagination? Well, according to him, it started with a don't. Don't try to get to imagination through iteration. Iteration is the basis of design thinking and other logical approaches to engineering. It's how computers think, but not Tesla. Tesla saw that it hampered creativity. It limited you to tweaking, refining, and troubleshooting instead of making those big leaps of imagination. So how do you make big leaps of imagination? Well, forget not just iteration, but other computerized approaches to creativity, like brainstorming, divergent thinking, and ideation. Instead, focus on exceptional information. Exceptional information is an exception to an existing rule. It's the warm-blooded reptile or the rainbow at night. In Tesla's case, the exception was to the standard account of electricity. In Tesla's day, the rule of engineering was that electricity was direct current, or DC. But Tesla spotted an exception, alternating current, or AC. And he saw that unlike DC, AC could be boosted 
to high voltages and transmitted across long distances, prompting Tesla to have a vision of a future world connected by electricity, the world that we're living in today. So the next step to, uh, to creativity, like Tesla, is to imagine what if the exception became the new rule? What if AC was everywhere? What if electricity went global? Computers can't think like that. Computers cannot imagine the consequences of an exception. Computers can only jump over exceptions into pre-programmed routines. But your brain evolved to turn exceptions into new rules. That's why if you spend time with a child, you'll see that she's constantly spotting exceptions to existing rules. She's constantly imagining possibilities in life that adults have missed. And that's why this approach to imagination wasn't just used by Tesla. It was used by many other makers of our modern world, including, for example, Vincent van Gogh and Marie Curie. In van Gogh's case, the rule of art was that yellow was a minor color. But then Van Gogh spotted an exception, the sun. And he wondered, what if the color of the sun was everywhere? And he painted sunflowers. In Marie Curie's case, the rule of science was that energy could not come from inside the atom. But then Curie spotted an exception radioactivity, and she wondered, what if the power of the atom was everywhere? And she put modern physics on a path to see the Big Bang. Okay, so that's how you can improve your imagination. You spot exceptions and turn them into new rules. What about common sense? How can you improve your common sense? Well, you won't improve it in college. But as I discovered recently, there's a secret organization whose whole focus is improving common sense. It's inside the United States Army. It's part of US Army Special Operations. So I went down to one of their covert sites to learn how it is they improve common sense. My first day there, here's what I saw. An instructor gathered together a group of recruits, and he said to them, all right, Here's the situation. The enemy has three flame-throwing tanks, and you've got three soldiers. What's your plan of attack? Well, to answer this question, the recruits thought back to everything they'd learned in their previous army schools. They thought back to all of their training in tactics and strategy, and they came up with all sorts of plans for attacking the flame-throwing tanks. The instructor took all those plans without even reading them. He tore them up and he threw them away and he said, use your common sense. Why would you attack flame throwing tanks? That's suicide. You'll get everyone killed. When I asked you my question, you shouldn't have given me your best answer. You should have told me that's a dumb question. You should have questioned my question. What the instructor was saying is, forget how you've been trained to think in school. In school, when you're asked a question, you're trained to answer it. You think back to your textbooks, back to your formulas, back to your theories. You input the information you have, and you trust what comes out. That is how computers think. If you ask an AI a question, it will give you the best answer it can calculate, based on the information it already has. It won't question the question. When you think in that computerized way, you follow how you've been programmed. Instead of trusting what your lived experience is telling you, you surrender your natural intelligence to an artificial system that can't evolve at the same speed as the world that you are living in. To get back to reality, stop thinking like a computer, and reactivate your common sense. 
which is special operations has discovered, one way to do that is by questioning the question, which is also something that your brain evolved to do. Your brain evolved to challenge authority. That's why, back when you were two years old, you used to have a favorite thing to tell your parents, the favorite word of toddlers everywhere. That favorite word, of course, is no. When you question the question, you free yourself from the assumptions of the system that you are living in. You reveal that the old rules won't work for your new situation, that existing algorithms can't give you the answers you need. So how do you find those answers? Well, you do like Tesla and Van Gogh and Curie. You use your imagination. You imagine possible answers that you test against your lived experience until you find one that works in the world. And that is how common sense and imagination work together in the brain. Common sense helps you ask new questions. Imagination helps you find new answers, growing at the speed of life. So that's what your brain can do that computers can't. That is low data intelligence. But not all of it. Because in addition to imagination and common sense, there's a third big source of low data intelligence in your brain. That third source is emotion. And no emotion is smarter than courage. Courage will help you do like Tesla did to technology, and like Van Gogh did to art, and like Marie Curie did to science. Courage will help you be the exception to the rule. The rule today is computers. Computers are everywhere, in schools and on screens, and they are telling you what they told my student. They are telling you that they are the future. They are telling you that their intelligence will replace yours. But you can dare to think different. You can dare to challenge Silicon Valley, the internet, and AI. You can dare to trust your own brain. You were born with the imagination to see the future and the common sense to make it happen. But it all starts with the courage to believe that your biology is smart. Smart, like no computer. Thank you. <laughs>